Hi, my name's uh, Nigel Forks and we're uh, today fishing over at Magpie Lake Piddly. Um, today I've decided to go winter silver fishing. Um, it's about five foot deep and we're actually looking to try and catch fish in that first two, two and a half foot layer. Um, we've already started, we've had a number of fish, um, some good roach up to eight ounces. Um, we're alternating between pinky and caster. Um, and we, so far we've actually found that the fish tend to be further in, up in the middle layers as opposed to anywhere near the bottom. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some of my rigs um, to give you a better idea of the type of style of float that I'm using and the general hook patterns as well. This particular rig is, a, is an image cut float. Um, it's, it's a very old float. It's been, I've had it in my tackle box now for many, many years. And I guess it's like everything in fishing. It's all about having confidence. It takes around about five number 10s, um, and I'm fishing a PR23 hook. Um, unfortunately, you can't get a hold of these hooks anymore, but uh, again, it's one of those hook patterns I feel particularly confident in. Bait selection, as I mentioned just a minute ago, is going to be pinkies and casters. We're going to alternate between feeding pinky um, as well as caster. The pinky generally attracts the smaller fish, and then with the smaller fish, the activity that they create by feeding caster, you, you end up trying to draw more and more bigger fish into your peg at the same time. We talked about uh, bait earlier and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to actually take you through the selection of bait that I've actually got on my bait tray. Um, as you can see I've got bronze, red maggots, pinkies and some casters. Um, I like to have a variety of bait on my tray in the winter. And as much as there, may, there appears to be a lot, today we've had minus two temperatures, um, the water is extremely cold. I always like to have more than enough bait than not enough bait. And again, I've seen so many anglers actually go to a venue um, with too much in the way of extreme quantities of baits, um, but also on the other hand, not enough bait. And there's nothing worse than actually finding that you, you end up sitting on a lot of fish and you don't have sufficient bait. If I can just take you through the casters, I've got a variety of different colour shades of casters and the casters, so often people tend to put them in water, I don't and again it all relates to temperature. The temperature drops below 3 degrees, you tend to find that you've got the equivalent of a fridge temperature so therefore you don't necessarily need to put water into them. The other reason why I don't put water in them um, is simply because when I feed through the catapult what you tend to find is that they, they will actually stick, stick to the pouch of the pulp. So when you're actually feeding, they actually end up going all over the place rather than actually in a nice tight area. Colours are also very important and I found the darker the colour, the better the bite response I tend to get. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute in terms of how I hook the caster as well. Pinkies, I mentioned earlier, um, it's great to be able to feed pinkies at this time of the year because what it's doing is it's attracting lots of smaller fish into your peg and in doing so you then switch to a caster by feeding caster at the same time pinch a caster on and you tend to sort out the bigger fish you might be catching four ounce fish you end up catching eight ounce to a pound fish so it does make a bit of a difference the red and the, and the bronze maggot are just a change bait What I'd like to do now is take you through the rigs that I'm using today. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, we've got five foot of water out there and I've got different rigs set at different depths to hopefully compensate in terms of where the fish will be feeding. First rig I've got is a, is a desk float. Um, it's got a wire stem and it's a 0.6 of a gram. That's an extremely positive rig in only five foot of water. It's not something that I would often use, but because it's winter, I want to get the bait right to the bottom, and if the fish are feeding on the bottom, at least it gets the bait there quicker. <clears throat> Hook length, again, is, is 010 diameter, down to a PR23. Um, and as I say, that one's set at full depth. The next rig I've got is what I mentioned earlier, which I've been catching a lot of fish on this morning, is my image cut float. Um, and again, that takes five number 10s down to a PR23, and again, the constant changing and variation of depth has made a big, big difference this morning. The other rig that I've got is this rig here. And this rig is set 18 inches deep. Um, and already I've caught fish doing it. But they're not coming as quickly as I'd hoped they would do. This takes two number 10 as a drop, um, as a bulk. Um, and it's a little turbotini, again, with a wire stem, which gives that opportunity for the float to cock very, very quickly and allows me to see the bites quicker as well. 
The last rig I'd like to show you is a Hillbilly Blimp. 4x10, lovely float, extremely well made, again with a wire stem and a hollow bristle as well. Um, very, very strong, very durable, but it's equally very, very good for me because I'm starting to lose my sight as, as I get older, but it's great when I'm fishing 14 or even up to 16 metres and it allows me to suspend a heavier bait because of its buoyancy and its bristle. So those are my rigs, all very simple, and that's the key thing with your rigs, is keeping them neat and very, very simple. Okay, we're fishing at around about 11 metres and uh, we're loose feeding casters and pinkies as I mentioned earlier. Um, but the key thing is just to feed them slightly shorter than where you're actually fishing. Um, and again, we're fishing at around about two, two and a half foot deep. Uh, mentioned earlier on, it's, it's very cold today. So we're looking to try and build your peg over time rather than actually trying to catch a lot of fish very, very quickly early on. The key thing is to keep moving that float, keep moving the float gently but having it dotted as fine as you possibly can. That, that float out there is like a pinprick and then we just missed a bite then. So there's fish there. Just keep lifting and dropping the float. Keeping everything neat and tidy. Loose feeding and a few pinkies as well at the same time. In the summer that float would have gone by now. What we might need to do is we're not getting any quick response by doing that so we may have to readjust our depth just to find out exactly where those fish are. Let's try and uh, let's have a look and see what happens. It's going to make a slight minor change to the depth, maybe about four inches, Let's see if that makes a difference. You notice the way I lay the rig in, that's very very important, keeping everything nice and tidy, keep loose feeding. Fish are very finicky today. The danger is if I go anywhere near that bottom, there's every chance there's a bite, missed it. So there's fish there, which is good. Another little tip as well is when you're roach fishing is to try and tight line it. And what we mean by tight lining it is you actually hold the line very tight against the bristle and it allows the drop, there's a bite and another missed bite. So that would suggest that I found the fish where the depth of happy to feed at, just by making a four inch adjustment to my float. Now the key thing is to try and get it absolutely perfect. And that could be an inch, literally an inch. And in making that inch adjustment could result in hitting every one of those bites. Some of them really sharp bites that I've just missed could be liners as well where they're darting around in the water intercepting the bait as it falls. See in the summer you'd be feeding all the time, constantly. Half a dozen casters, sometimes more, depends on how the fish want it. But as I say the temperature this morning was minus two. I'm so surprised there's not even any ice on the lake today. I mentioned earlier on about that thermocline and that's that warm layer of water where the fish are happy to feed in. I'm going to make another adjustment as well. Again we're going to go back down maybe four or five inches again. And if that doesn't work we'll actually do it again until we do find them. Let's not feed anything this time.
It's like the more I feed today, the worse it's getting. So it takes us back to what I mentioned earlier. It's about being very, very careful with the amount of food that you're putting into your peg. Because once it's in, you can't take it out. No, that adjustment's not made any difference either. No, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> Let's go back again a little bit deeper. Let's go up to at least eight inches deeper this time. And I'm also going to actually readjust marginally my telltale shot, which is right next to my hook. That's about four inches away from the hook. And when you do get the bites, they're actually very, very delicate bites. And if that float wasn't dotted like it is, the fish would actually feel the resistance in the buoyancy of the tip and actually blow the bait out as quick as take it, and you wouldn't even see a bite. The fact that that float is dotted down is the equivalent of a pinhead. And with this nice clear white water with a black bristle allows me to see every single little indication on that float. There's a bite and a fish. So that adjustment, oh we've lost it. That simple adjustment resulted in getting a bite. Well that's the art of roach fishing, it's about being busy. You can't just simply sit around waiting for the fish to come find your bait. You've got to often at this time of year go and find them. And as I say, you know, a four inch to an inch variation in your depth, or even up to six inches, either deeper or shallow, can make a massive difference. Forecasters, that's all. another indication just as the bait was settling so we may well have found the depth at which they're happy to feed at just marginally lift that bristle and drop it back in again Pinkies. There's an indication. It's gone. And a fish. Not particularly big fish, but a nice little roach at that. There he is. Lovely little roach. Single, single pinky. Feeding casters. Now and again, feeding a few pinkies to try and encourage the smaller fish to feed. Ideally what we want to try and do is get the fish really shallow, but I can't see that's going to happen. There was an inquiry on the drop. Albeit there was a, when we arrived here this morning, there was quite a few fish topping, which was a good sign, but as the day's gone on, the, the fish have stopped topping. I'm starting to get indications as that's dropping through the water, which would suggest that coming up. Again, we, there's a bite and a mist. Feed going in, but again, it's not as regular as I would do in the summer. Fish just topped in the lake. Bump, there's another fish. Slightly bigger fish. A 
another little tip is the way in which, uh, I don't know whether you noticed, but my pole is, I'm actually sitting on my pole, <coughs> which allows me to have two hands completely free to do both the unnetting and again the rehooking of the bait. Everything's very, very quick and very simple. And that's what fishing's really all about, keeping everything simple. To sort of summarise, I guess, um, I think just by simply demonstrating the, the adjustments to your hook, your telltale shot, your depth, makes a big difference when catching roach at this time of the year. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Well, I really enjoyed the day's fishing. Albeit it's been really hard today, the difference in actually adjusting and both in terms of feeding patterns, depth changes, made a significant difference. And uh, I guess the results of a very hard day's fishing, the temperatures still not even above zero. Thoroughly enjoyed.